Welcome. Uh, it's Wednesday, August 15th at 6.15. Uh, we are here for the Community and Economic Development Committee meeting. To my right is John Swayzer. To my left is Tom Kendall. And myself is Chair William Twiss. Uh, we have one item to come before us tonight. It's to provide a recommendation to Council on a rezoning of 107 acres uh, located on both sides of uh, Piquetroy Road from agricultural residential and office commercial district to a planned development. Patrick, would you like to add? I can give you the overview. Um, so June 27th, uh, the Planning Commission recommended unanimously that this be forwarded for approval uh, to the City Council. At the last uh, Council meeting, there was a public hearing. I believe you have a copy of some of the comments and the questions that were, were asked. Uh, as you stated, uh, Mr. Chair, this is 107, approximately 107 acres. Uh, part of uh, the infrastructure would be um, private, that being the street and the storm, which means that the city would not have any responsibilities for it. Um, the other portion being water and, and sanitary sewer, we do want to make sure is public, part of the public. Uh, utility infrastructure. Uh, there are, were several conditions that were placed uh, by the uh, Planning Commission as part of their recommendation to you. Um, limiting direct access to Piqua Troy Road. Um, again, the, uh, the private versus the public infrastructure. Uh, the road names being approved by the city engineer. Uh, and the fact that we want all the cul-de-sacs to be unfilled there was a thought in, uh, originally that in the middle of the circle of the uh, cul-de-sac, maybe there'd be some green space. Uh, I think it was primarily the fire department was concerned with that, with their equipment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Planning Commission wants to make sure that that just is pavement. Um, I believe that's the essential elements. Okay. Would you like to? your comment at this time? Well, yes, I, I would. Uh, my name is Tom Kendall, member of this committee, and uh, I am going to recuse myself uh, from this issue. And uh, the, the reason is, uh, while nobody has exchanged hands, we are looking at uh, purchasing one of these properties. Uh, so uh, I, to, to avoid any potential uh, view of it being a conflict, I, I will recuse myself from this. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, John? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Um, this is coming in as a, as, as a PD or a P, PUD? Mm -hmm. PD. Um, is there anything, is it, I'm assuming there'll be covenants with it that, that go with it? I imagine there will be, yes. Okay. Will there be anything in those covenants that prevent the developer from selling off to other properties like we had at Stonebridge Meadows? Just to protect the landowners? Um, I do know that the, the, uh, the applicant is here in the audience and maybe he can uh, uh, answer that. And while he's Please, coming forward to answer that, I do, I do want to put on the record, because I know it's going to come up, uh, that this will have to follow all of the standards, rules, regulations, the laws that are set uh, in our zoning code as well as our subdivision regulations. And so, you know, the uh, conformance to all of our stormwater requirements uh, and, and, and all of those uh, uh, public infrastructure uh, requirements will need to be followed prior to any approval uh, and building. Right, and that would mean that the water has to shed off as good as it is now or better or than... Or better. Or better. Right, and if you... Uh, I passed out larger copies so everybody could see, but... And, and Mr. Harlow is here, and he can explain in more detail, but you can see a lot of blue um, uh, in that property. I counted at least seven different retention uh, areas for stormwater on, uh, uh, in, within this PD. Mm -hmm. 
How you doing? Frank Carlo, yeah. 701 North Market Street, Troy, Ohio. And uh, I'll, I'll address your questions for you. Uh, your first question was covenants and restrictions. And there are going to be very strict covenants and restrictions. This will be a PD with an association, a very strict association with a clubhouse and, and a lot of uh, maintenance to be taken care of. Uh, so there'll be restrictive covenants for all that, Res very restrictive covenants on architecture and what the product's going to be. Uh, it, as of right now, it's intended that everything will be masonry with vinyl soffits, so maintenance free for the folks that are going to buy it. We are targeting the retirement community, so that that's we want to make it uh, very maintenance free. So the longevity of the buildings are very long and, and without a lot of maintenance to go with them. So uh, as far as being able to sell it off, my intent, obviously, I'm the builder here in Troy that's been you know doing this. My intent is to stay with it all the way through you know something could change my health could change or whatever so there's nothing to say that it, it wouldn't get sold to somebody in that situation but the covenants will be restrictive enough where if somebody else did take it over due to unforeseen circumstance they would have to follow the same restrictive covenants that we're you know this is being set up to be the best thing in the retirement com type community that troy's ever had and hopefully it will be and uh so so that so that's it as far as watershed goes, I've worked for four months or five months now with uh, staff to not only have way more detention that's required on this property, but to have additional retention to help the whole watershed of the Kidder Ditch. The Kidder Ditch is a big issue right now, and we've worked pretty hard together to, to make this piece of property help the Kidder Ditch downstream. You know, it enters into this property to the northeast and then it exits you know to the south mm -hmm. and it, what we're going to do with this property as that goes through this property is going to help the whole the whole kidder ditch tremendously no different than we've done with the halifax uh, section uh, r1 zoning which is the one acre lots over off troy urbana we we've worked really hard to put in a one pond and now we're putting in the other pond to help the water downstream and and we've uh, you know, seeing a huge uh, uh, increase in in or decrease in water, if that's what you want to call it, and 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 it's helped tremendously by what we've done there. We hope to do the same thing with this. Okay, and and there's the there's an eight acre section that is mm -hmm. between your proposed um, development and Finsbury, and, mm -hmm. and that kind of goes into a, a a ditch also or a V ravine. Co correct. How is that going to be? Is it, how's that water going to be channeled? So are you speaking of the eight acres that we that at yeah. one point was going to be lots and we decided not to do that. Mm -hmm. So so there's a pond to the north end of that. Right. And that part of that pond is to help this whole problem. As we're doing that pond, we'll we'll re topo that land and make sure that everything works very well. And and I've met with all the residents out there and I think that they're all on board with what we're going to do. And that's why we pulled that down because we don't want the residents to not have something that's what they want back there. So as this all develops out, we'll we'll re topo that land with doing the pond and everything and make sure that all works very well and try to try to control that whole water situation much better than it is now okay and so this this is all going to be senior living it's targeted totally at senior living both, both sides of both sides of the road yes okay the, the the our targeted demographic is 50 and above so we don't anticipate a lot of of, of children in there i I don't anticipate any children, but you don't know somebody could move in. Uh, uh, somebody could have their grandkids, and, and you're not going to stop that, you know. So, but I wouldn't think there would be very many children. I was just uh, concerned the way about impact out of Miami East. Or I don't, you know. I talked to the superintendent the other day. I don't think this will have any impact on Miami East. And Halifax itself, we've got 40 lots sold to date, and I think there's eight children so far going to Miami East out of 40 lots. So we're not even impacting. My niece too negatively with what we're doing in, in the big subdivision. It'll certainly be a big help on that end of town yeah. for, for uh, retail also. Yeah. Um, I have nothing else at this okay. point. Any other council members in the audience have any questions? Or, or, or Madam President. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Titterington, isn't this a rezoning 
at this time, will the PD be coming through separate later? There are several steps to the, to the PD process. This is only the first one. Thank you. Any comments from city staff? And we're here just to approve the rezoning change. Recommend. Or to recommend uh, for just the zoning change from agricultural office to plan development. Okay, John. Uh, Yes. Would you like to? <laughs> I asked if anybody said it. Did, did you want to put it out to the audience? Oh, does anybody in the audience have any comments or questions? questions? Sorry. Yeah. You have a couple of comments. My name is Rusty Miller. I spoke at the last council meeting. I live on Eldine Road. I got a little different numbers from Dr. Rappold. Uh, he said there's already 20 students in the Halifax. And uh, he's already looking for trailers to put out there, and we just put a new building out there a couple years ago. So we're already at capacity and beyond. Uh, but my biggest concern is, you know, you're developing Sherwood. You know, West Side has developed, as you all know, as, as much as it can get. The East Side's always been kind of the quiet side, which Sherwood, new businesses, is great. But like I said, since you redesigned the traffic pattern there, and you're going to develop it, so you went down from four lanes to two, it makes no sense for three blocks of, of bikeway. And then everybody goes the back way to the, the west side through Eldine and out Spearmint Farm, which is where I live on Eldine. So, I mean, there's, the traffic is, I've lived in Troy my entire life. I've always been in Miami's district. I've been on Eldine for 30 plus years. Um, I mean, it doesn't affect you guys off here in the city of Troy. You know, it's your tax dollars, your development. My concern is the county's not going to keep up with you unless we put a four lane out pick with Troy and Eldine. The traffic is just out of control. I set my driveway for five, ten minutes sometimes just to get out of the drive. So that's my biggest concern because um, the infrastructure is not going to hold it. Yeah, thanks. Robert Brimbaugh, Stanton Township. The wife and I are vigorously opposed to this development. Uh, anybody in my immediate neighborhood I've talked to is opposed to this development. Uh, to dump 260 households on the Miami East taxpayers, I think, is just wrong. Just absolutely wrong, with apparently no recourse. Uh, lack of amenities on the north side, no grocery. What makes this attractive to buyers with all the empty storefronts on the north side of Troy? As I stated previously, the cart is before the horse with regard to this development. And uh, Mr. Harlow almost made me believe that Finsbury wouldn't be impacted by the water. I'm holding judgment. We'll wait and see if they aren't having water problems again. Thank you. Anybody else? Appreciate your comments. Um, what would you like to? Let's move forward. I would agree. Let's move forward to recommend the zoning change to to council. Is there uh, anything else coming for the committee? All right. We are adjourned.